All right, welcome to Scott Edwards, Scott E Wrestling on Twitter. Scott, you are somebody who now in this wrestling fandom business, in this content creation business, in order to do good work, you have to kind of watch a lot of wrestling. And (laughs) I see the things that you tweet about. And in the back of my mind, I think, how does Scott have enough time to watch the Kurt Angle Annie documentary? Like, (laughs) like... Uh, and then that's no shot at, at the Kurt Angle documentary. I'm going to eventually get to it, too. I, I definitely yeah. want to see it. But you're watching Stardom in the middle of the night. And then yeah. you're following up with New Japan. And then you're keeping up with the current U.S. promotions as much as, as you can. Like, what is your priority here? You're wearing the Boston Red Sox hat. I don't imagine you're watching too many Red Sox games right now. Uh, My job is watching Red Sox games, actually. Uh, that, that's right. Like, that's right. <laughs> so my shoot job is actually watching them. So that's funny that you bring that up. So, like, it's so funny. If I'm off nowadays, it's because I've been a Red Sox fan my whole life. If I'm off, I'm not watching the Red Sox. Mostly because they're, like, so – it's been a struggle, you know, to watch them this season. Like, yeah. or the second half of the season. The first right. half was pretty fun. Uh, but it's so funny that you say that because, like, okay, well, that's what I'm doing while I'm actually at work. Uh, but yeah, I, I I don't know how I do it all. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like watching that Kurt Angle uh, documentary, that was the first one I saw of this year's uh, biographies, and it was great. If anyone hasn't checked it out, but yeah, it's hard. You gotta just pick and choose. I mean, I I say pick and choose, and then you name all those things that I'm watching. I'm like, <laughs> do I really pick and choose? Uh, I don't watch anything like full. So like AEW and Stardom are the only two that I'll watch all their stuff so i'll watch all of their t I, I don't watch dark or dark elevation i'm sorry but i will watch all aw tv and i will watch all of stardom shows mostly because that's kind of like the beat i'm running now in a, in a lot of ways but yeah. that's and then everything else is just pick and choose like i i can't get myself to watch a chase owens versus you know guy that i can't <laughs> yeah. name off the top sure. of my head match. sure yeah, but I, I make it work somehow. And, you know, there's there's times that I have to, you know, cut back a little bit. But it may not sound like that when my Twitter's going off of like, oh, this match was great. Oh, this match was bad. Like, it, it it's give and take. It's give and take. But I try yeah. to fit it all in. <laughs> all right. I'm going to list uh, all the places where you are creating content. And we'll get that out of the way now. So people who, as they listen to you. They may be able to find you. Uh, all, all this stuff is also on your Twitter. But um, Ring Post Radio, last word on pro wrestling, the Ocean Cyclone Show, obviously, Fightful and Voices of Wrestling. Um, again, th- there is a time commitment to all of these different places. And we'll br- I'll bring up the other the, the podcast that you do for Fight Game Media in a second. But, mm-hmm. you know, this is all... Uh, this is all time consuming. This is all, you know, you're doing this sort of for a reason. Does that help when you sort of justify as much as you do watch? Cause you're like, Oh yeah, I have to write about this. Oh yeah. I'm going to talk about this on this thing. But also at the same time, how do you keep it all organized in, in that prioritization? Yeah. It does help if I'm writing about it or talking about it. Like that's, that's kind of the goal now. It's like, if I'm watching something, I want it to mean something at this point because I might let it go after a while. Like I might not watch it if I'm not making it mean something, whether it be via podcast or writing an article, uh, keeping track of it, the podcasts, they're usually pretty simple. I mean, I, I record the same time every week about with my co-hosts. Um, and then one of them's one of the ocean cyclone show is monthly. So that's, it makes that keeps it a little bit easier. Uh, when it comes to you know fightful and voices of wrestling, voices of wrestling, I mostly do previews and reviews for stardom shows, but I'll do a feature once in a while when I have mm-hmm. time. And fightful, I've gone all in on that, um, which has taken a lot more time out of my schedule, but it's 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 everything I love. So I'm not I'm not upset with it. You know, it's it's worth every minute but it, it is hard to keep track after a while you kind of have to go back and forth you know i have notes phone uh the notes in my app like i'm writing down <laughs> what i'm yeah. trying to remember to do this week what i need to get done so like for example i'm going on vacation next week and i'm like 
almost dreading it in some ways because I have so much to do in my head. So I have to get it all done this week. Uh, but that's part of it. That's part of it. That's what I signed up for. That's what I want to do it for. So it's part of the game, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's a great it's a great thing that you just mentioned because a couple weeks ago I went on vacation as well. And so this podcast, so th- this video is is on the F4W uh, channel, but this is also being tagged onto the end of the fight game podcast w- with John LaRocca. I there was going to be two weeks where I missed out on doing the show with John, mm-hmm. and so I had to pre-record two shows, yeah. both evergreen shows, to kind of fill that. Because you know the worst thing is when you kind of get a little bit of rhythm, and mm-hmm. you're comfortable, and your audience is comfortable. To take time off, it feels like, oh, no, I'm going to lose that momentum. So keeping that momentum going is uh, right. probably probably a little bit more of an anxiety thing for us. I am sure the people who like to listen will come back, but it's just like, oh, yeah. we're doing so many cool things. I don't want to stop that momentum. So totally get that. Now, the thing that you do with me is uh, the Five Star Joshi, Joshi Show, which originally... Uh, I believe now remind me, I Parker did it and you were the co-host and then Pretty Parker much, yeah. had to Parker had to step away. Mm-hmm. Uh, his 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 real life job uh, got in the way of it. And then you took it over solo and yeah. you were bringing on guests and you were really covering the, you know, covering it all. And then Parker's recently come back. He's had some more time. Now he may bounce mm-hmm. in and out a little bit, but now you're the host and he's your co-host. So that kind of worked out. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool but you know i will say for people who enjoy joshi or want to listen or want to learn and get into it which is we're going to talk about that in a second scott you know he has the show that he does on the patreon uh fight game uh, patreon.com uh, front slash fight game media it's five bucks it's the it's a very cheap uh patreon to subscribe to and then we've recently made a free version of that show, which is only the stardom conversation. Mm-hmm. So if you want all of the other Joshi promotions that, that Scott covers, you, you do go, go for the Patreon. But this, uh, the, the, the show that you do is, is either Saturday or Sunday, depending on what other schedules are. And now that has, has become, you know, one of the most listened to uh, on the fight game media network. So that podcast now talk about just the, idea behind it because for a u.s audience mm. i can imagine i know there are some diehard joshi fans in the yeah. u.s i know because i see our twitter and i see who reacts <laughs> to the posts when you when you put yeah. the show up yeah. but at the same time i know there's also some bubbling interest of people in the u.s who want to learn more mm. so how do you put that show together knowing that the hardcore audience knows everything and they want to hear you talk about it. But also, there's this kind of burgeoning audience who's like, gosh, I've always wanted to give Joshi a try. Maybe this is kind of my gateway to it. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, I think the most important thing when when I'm preparing the show, because oftentimes I have I do that now because obviously Parker, like you said, in and out a little bit. Um, it's kind of become my show in a lot of ways. Um, but he's, he's my co-host as long as he's around. Um, but... The, the purpose of any time I'm creating like the docket of making each week's show is you want to focus on really what everyone wants to hear the most. And that is stardom. That is why it's the free episode, right? So we give that almost an hour per week at least yeah. because that's, that's what people want to hear. That's just the truth. And, you know, we're in the, and as we're going to talk about a little bit, we're in the five-star Grand Prix time. And that is the most important Joshi tournament of the year. So for me, it's like, okay, let's, let's talk about each match. Let's talk about why it was good, why it was bad. The, the wrestlers that are in there, because say, if you're listening to for the first time and you're hearing about, you know, for example, Koguma for the, you've probably never heard of her before. You might hear of like, (laughs) right. Like you might hear of like the, 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 you know, the ones like Dave's talked about Tommy and Mayu, like you've maybe heard about them, but you 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 go deep into that roster we want to give care to everyone because if you're a first time listener, you have no idea who these people are. You right. may know the basics, but that's why that's why I've crafted it that way. So and Parker's great because he watches it all at the same time. And obviously with his job coming back, 
I don't know how much that'll happen, but we're going to do our best. And when I bring guests on, for me, it's it's finding a different mindset too, especially given the topic. So if I'm bringing someone on for stardom, I want them to bring a different you know, attitude to it. If I'm bringing someone on for TJPW, it's because they enjoy the product. I don't want to bring people on that are just going to you know hate something. Right. Right. You don't right. want to do that. You because the, the point of the podcast is to grow Joshi and make people aware of it. So that's kind of where I'm at in designing that show. It's it's to almost always be positive. We'll call out bad things because listen, wrestling can't be perfect, but it is to inform, it is to give our own thoughts and hopefully make people want to watch. Because to me, that's always going to be the most important. That's why I do all this. Absolutely. Uh, you are helping sort of educate. Uh, around the sport as it as it grows and in the u.s you know i do think that there now there's a lot to watch if you are a u.s wrestling fan there's a lot to follow there's a lot to cover but this uh, if, if you are interested in, in stardom or or other joshi promotions like it does seem like there's this bubbling that is there and and yeah. you know the their star uh, stardom and new japan are are looking to take advantage of some yeah. of that. So so that's going to be an interesting thing. And I'll ask you about that in a second. But you mentioned the, the five-star GP that is going on now. So I think most people know who listen to this, they sort of understand how the G1 works. The G1 is also mm -hmm. going on right now. G -max, uh, G1 uh, Climax 32. And I'll ask you a couple questions about that in a second. But what? Uh, how, give us the nuts and bolts of the five-star GP and how that works in sort of comparison to how the G1 yeah. works. So it's pretty much the same, except they're keeping it at two blocks. I mean, we didn't expand to the four blocks that a lot of people don't enjoy. And there's 26 participants this year. That's so it's nearly the same. Yeah. There's 13 person people per block. It's exactly the same. Not all their shows are live, though. That's the real trick here. Like unlike the G1, Stardom does not have all their GP shows live. So, like, for example, I'm I'm currently sitting here waiting for shows to be uploaded so that we can review it this week, right? Right. And that is the one that's the one trick with stardom is that they'll do the live pay-per-view. So the first opening weekend, live pay-per-view for day one, day two of the tournament. Um, you know, I did a live show for that really quickly on the Fight Game Media uh YouTube page. And then we talked about it, me and Parker talked about it in depth. But when you're waiting for it, you really don't know when it's going to be uploaded. It'll be uploaded within that week. But, for example, this Thursday, there's a Cork and Hall show that has, I think, 11 tournament matches on it. And it's like, okay, so we gotta, I got to watch all these. I got to watch all those. <laughs> probably going to save the Cork and Hall ones until next, well, not even next week because I'm not here. So, like, it's it's playing the game here. I yeah. might do, you know, like, that's that's the game because they draw, they usually are weekend events, usually. But they will have, if there's a holiday, a Japanese holiday, they will do a show on that day because more people can go. Um, so, that's the game you play. It is like the G1, though, though uh, the time limits are 15 minutes, not 30 minutes. So it's a lot easier to take in. Like you may see all those matches. I think there's 156 Ooh. to be exact in the entire tournament. But it's easy when, you know, the opening matches are going six, seven minutes. And then the, the later ones are going maybe 15. Like the most recent, like the Utami Shuri rematch, it went 1456. So it's easy to digest, but that is that is the nuts and bolts of that tournament. Uh, but I think it's the most exciting tournament to watch. Obviously, I have a little bias here, but it's so exciting because <laughs> avoiding spoilers is the tough part. I don't do yeah. that because, I, again, I cover it for Fightful, right. so like I'm getting those results up. But I know people that try to do that it is what it is. It's, it's still fun to watch. They'll have live shows throughout the tournament, and then the final day, guaranteed live show. So that, that's how it really goes all right so the uh the tournament as far as the quality how would you rate this year so far okay how far are we into it we're because it's only been two, a couple weeks two weekends. yeah so we're in two weekends in i thought the first weekend was outstanding the first night was on par with last year's and last year's might be the best full tournament i've seen and when i say full tournament I, see, I watch every single match i watch every single match of last year's tournament i watch every single uh match of last year's g1 for example and i thought this one was far better obviously new japan's dealing with different you know they don't have their full roster at the time but that's that's the beauty of this 
stardom roster. They have their whole roster at all times. They're bringing in outsiders from other Joshi promotions, and it's really helping them keep it fresh. Uh, but we're two weeks in. The opening night was one of their best shows of the year, which is saying a lot because I go on record. I don't think stardom misses with their pay-per-views. It's like worth every penny every time I buy one. Um, but yeah, I think it's up to stands. I'm still, again, I'm still waiting to see this weekend's, but so far so good because when you even have like the top star against one of the rookies, it's still quality stuff. Um, and I think it's why you watch these tournaments to see wrestlers grow too. And that's mm-hmm. really what you'll see if you st- watch it from beginning to end. There's no better time to jump in than right now. Uh, it, and all of these shows, whether it's pay-per-view or the weekend shows, they do get uploaded to stardomworld.com uh, where you can check them all out. So definitely definitely jump in if you haven't yet. Uh, do, have they – do do they do – do they have any uh, U.S. or American announcers, or is it all in J- Japanese? So they have done English commentary. Um, for anyone that watches Pro Wrestling Noah, um, Stuart Fulton, their lead announcer, He's been utilized as their um, head English commentator. So I'm guessing he's going to be there. They do only do it for their major shows. Got so it. like the IWGP Women's World title, which they've said, okay, this might be defended on major shows. Sure. That's when they do English commentary. They won't do it for their like B-level pay-per-views. They actually haven't done it in a few months, but obviously that comes down to who's available. Um, and they have some roster members that speak English as well. So they'll do the color commentary if they're available. So that's the fun part of it. Uh, unfortunately, not everything. And even the house shows. House shows have no commentary. So that's just watching wrestling matches and moving on. And I know a lot of people, commentary is a big piece of them being a part of it because it explains it. But that's why you listen to the Five Star Joshi Show. <laughs> we, we'll explain it for you after the fact. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's hit or miss on the English commentary. But they do have it. All right. So as far as this tournament is concerned... As it is going so far, uh, who are the names that you expect to kind of be in the running now with 13 wrestler brackets? I'm sure yeah. that some of the drama of the show is to make as many people uh, as possible still live, you know, as you yeah. get, get near the end. But, you know, who are you who are you looking at going like, ah, you know, I'm pretty sure this person is going to be close to being, you know, to being there at the end. Uh, so, Julia is the has been my like for sure she's winning she was my for sure last year and then she got hurt so she had to miss the rest that's of it. right but we're doubling down this year and the best part is she went zero and two on the opening weekend <laughs> 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 so it's like uh-oh uh but you know you have that classic story of can she build herself back so she's one of the favorites utami is another favorite uh interesting part is no one's ever won the tournament twice so if Utami were to do it, she'd be the second, uh, first ever to win it twice. Um, I always count Mayu Utani in that conversation. Obviously, I'm big, naming big names here, but like they are always in the convo. And then there's like an outsider, like someone like a Suzu Suzuki or Risa Sarah. Suzu Suzuki, for those who watch her, she's fantastic. She's only 19 years old. And it's actually crazy how good she is for her age. A legitimate prodigy, someone that has been locked into stardom storylines all year. She's not signed with them, but she is a possibility. And Risa Sarah, like I said, uh, she's the leader of Suzu Suzuki's Joshi group, which is prominence. Uh, she's a vet. She's a two-time world champion in another promotion called Ice Ribbon, uh, which is a big uh, big one for Parker. If anyone follows Parker, knows him. That's his favorite promotion. Uh, so those are a couple of the favorites. Um and then, of course, there's the champions, Shuri and Sai Kamatani. But I never consider champions to win, even though Shuri did win last year. Now, we saw um, EO come back to WWE at yeah. SummerSlam. Uh, I, I don't know if she was thinking about going back to Japan, but mm. I know it was, it was very much, you know, hey, like, I, I, I need to be main roster or or yeah. I'm going I'm doing something else. Um, and also people would remember Kyrie. What is she, what's she up to? Is she, she's, is she in this tournament? She is not in the tournament, but she, so they have a pay-per-view upcoming this, I believe it's August 21st. 
She's having her first title match back, Wonder of Stardom Championship against Saya Kamatani. Uh, heavy favorite to win. She she's at just as good as she was, whether it was WWE or before WWE. Um, and like you brought up, Io Shirai, I really thought she was going to be coming back. I do think that Triple H getting a little uh getting a little power in WWE probably changed that because yeah, you know, I had an interview with uh Utami actually for Fightful, and she single-handedly named Io Shirai as her dream opponent. And the stardom wrestlers don't often just say things. Yeah. <laughs> like that's yeah. not a thing they do. Uh so I do think there was a real chance she would have came back. But as um as Dave Meltzer reported, her dream was really to make the main roster. Sure. And now she's doing that. So it's good for her. It makes sense. Uh, but I do think one day she'll be back. But Kyrie's doing great. So that's cool. Okay, let's talk about this crossover show that is happening. Stardom mm -hmm. in New Japan. Um, what what are your expectations as both a Stardom and New Japan fan as far as the the quality? I saw that there's going to be some uh, intergender or is it mixed tag stuff yes. that that they're going to yes. do, yep. and I know that doesn't necessarily vibe with a lot of uh, U.S. fans. Like they have their thoughts on on whether or not that you see it on the Indies a lot. Um, you don't really yep. WWE doesn't do it um uh, AEW have they done it i can't remember if they've done think, it yet i don't think so maybe a spot in a match but i don't think they've done like the official uh intergender matches but what so what do you think about that show what do you think about the idea the the combining the big the big uh, companies combined together for for one show is is that going to be a, a pretty interesting show to you absolutely i think it's i think it should be an annual show that they have planned every single year because the best way to spread stardom fans and get people interested is to have them wrestle on new Japan shows. Um, if you watch wrestle kingdom this year, you saw that stardom tag on the show. They actually got on the pay-per-view this year rather than being a dark match. Um, I think it's very smart. You know, the, uh, the idea that you maybe have Hiroshi Tanahashi and Mayu Yutani team up is exciting, or Okada and Utami Haishishida. Like, those are just smart ideas. But I believe the Kidani, who may be the Bushi Road president, who obviously is like owns both of them, he said he wants stardom to main event that show. So that alone is massive for them. Um, and as we know, the IWGP Women's Championship was announced, which is really exciting. And I expect that match to main event that show, actually. And do you sense, so now, utilizing the New Japan Strong Show brand, which is out here in the U.S., getting Joshi out in, in front of a U.S. audience is very interesting. Uh, we have... Uh, in WWE and AEW, there's a, a difference in in sort of quality of of women's wrestling. I would say when mm -hmm. WWE wants to do it really well, they can do it really yeah. well, and when they take their foot off the gas, it can be not so great. And I know AEW mm -hmm. is they're in some you know <laughs> learning stages, and there's so, yeah. there's been some good stuff, and then they kind of pulls back down. I would say inconsistent is, is a good way to describe it, but bringing over the 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 stardom. Uh, brand over to, to New Japan Strong and putting that in front of an audience is a very interesting move. And so the question is really, does that style, do you think that style can really work for this audience? I do think it can. Uh, they oftentimes when you see stardom wrestlers, um, they, they really put care into all their work. Um, and I don't know if they're going to be facing independent wrestlers, AEW wrestlers when they come over, but that's the excitement in it all. If you're putting on a, so say they do one of the new Japan strong pay-per-view shows like uh, music city mayhem, and they put an IWGP woman's title match on there. You get, you instantly just create interest. I think in the promotion because, Oh, it's a title match. Let me check it out. And I know a lot of people that are new Japan fans and stardom fans, that are really excited for this. And I know there's some stardom fans that are like, eh, I don't, I don't know about this uh, because you know, they, they want the wrestlers to just be successful in every way they can. And you watch AEW, right? Like Miu Yamashita just came over and faced 
Thunder Rosa for the AW uh, Women's World Championship on TV. And that had mixed reviews because obviously there was placement of the matches, which did bother people. But the way New Japan Strong airs, right, is that they cut every taping up. So it's like you'll never have to worry about where that booking is. And then with New Japan Strong, which I think is a good show most weekends mm -hmm. uh, that they air, you give them time, right? There's no time limit at these shows. This isn't a TV show. There's no, hey, we got to get out of here. So I think that's why I really like where they're going here rather than trying to do what a TJPW is doing and trying to just, hey, let's just splash them onto a AEW television once in a while where, listen, they don't have all that time in the world to show out. Even on AEW Dark, they don't get that much time. So yeah. I think it's perfect. This was my preference. If they were going to come to America, be on these New Japan shows because they have the time. You're more likely to have fans that are there to see that than not to. So I think it's a really good move. I was watching, we were talking about the Kurt Angle documentary before. I was watching the Bellas documentary. I actually uh, liked it. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. I was told uh, it was really good. Yeah, <laughs> actually, it was good. I, I mean, yeah. you know, the, whether or not how you do you if you think they should be of the importance enough. And I, I think they they are definitely uh, yeah, of the importance sure. to because of that diva show and because of sort of changing the the divas to what we have now they were a part of it they weren't the the big mm -hmm. the biggest part of it but they were definitely part of it they reminded me that or the documentary reminded me that nikki bella was in the main event of the evolution show against yeah. ronda rousey mm. and so i started to wonder a we in the U.S. outside of independent shows, I know Thunder Rosa is doing some some women's shows. There is not an active company that is women uh, women only. Uh, I know there's Women of Wrestling, which is more of a TV show, the Wow TV show, yeah. the you know the sort of the new glow. That I I, I that's I would say I don't know if they're going to be a touring promotion. Right. Uh, they're definitely a syndicated TV show, but. As I was watching the Evolution show, I was I was reminded how fun that show was for one, mm -hmm. how different it felt, especially under that WWE banner. And then it yep. made me think, could something like Stardom? Obviously, there's a lot of you. you you're it's a startup, so you have to sort of build from scratch. But right. I don't know. Maybe there's an offshoot of the New Japan Strong, uh, you know, U.S. promotion. Could an all women's company work in the U.S., do you think? Uh, it's such a fun question because, you know, you bring up Evolution, and that's a show that people talk about to this day of like, hey, let's do an Evolution 2. Let's, you know, run with that. And the reason Evolution works so well is because, as much as people don't want to hear it, it is because of having Nikki Bella and Ronda Rousey in the main event. They, are, they were your biggest names at the time. But I do think you could run another one of those. And to the stardom point, if if you run those shows, obviously you have to be smart with location and the amount that you do. So like New Japan Strong runs what? At least once a month probably for their recordings. I think if you were to do it, you'd have to do like every other month, something like that. And I think it could work. You got to pick the right locations. You got to figure out where there's interest. So obviously California jumps out because – that's really where New Japan's based. Um, mm -hmm. But there are shows like on the indies, for example. So uh, Deadlock Pro, they bring in a lot of Joshi wrestlers from other promotions to be on their shows. I think you can get enough people in a building. It's just a matter of being smart about it. You got to run the right building. You got to run the right location. And you got you to gotta, um, not do it too much. Mm -hmm. I think it can work. I think it can work. It just, it takes time. Cause like you said, mm -hmm. they may not be a startup Japan wise because, right. you know, ticket sales, they're probably number two right now, right behind new, J not right behind new Japan's huge, but they're behind new Japan, but sure. that's, that's pretty much it. So they're doing great there, but you gotta slowly build them up. So I think if you use those new Japan, new Japan strong shows, you keep putting them on the big new Japan shows and hopefully keep bringing eyes to the stardom product because in the end they have more eyes on their product than any other joshi promotion 
and you know you see other uh joshi wrestlers from every other promotion come over except for stardom so i do think it can work you just got to be smart about it you don't want to run too much like you gotta you gotta pick your shots and that's really with any startup kind of thing you gotta pick your spots you gotta pick the right location you gotta run not run too much but if you give a card that's worth seeing and you get your biggest names over there that's that's what's gonna sell we saw it with new japan because new japan went through that as well when they came over to the u.s with strong uh obviously strong started off in pretty much a uh warehouse but (laughs) they were doing u.s shows uh, a tour like i went to one where tanahashi and okada were on it and that's why yeah. i went yeah, so you exactly. bring you bring utami you bring my you bring julia you bring at least two of them people are gonna go i think that's yeah. how that works you bring your biggest stars people are gonna go all right a couple of quick hitters here and then we'll let you go um favorite g1 match so far of the 2022 climax oh uh g1 climax or five star grand prix no, 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 sorry. The G yeah, the, the G1 climax. Oh, oh. Um Osprey and Shingo. Yeah, I just saw that today. That was that was, uh, great. was great stuff. Yeah. Um favorite US promotion TV show. Uh Dynamite. <laughs> that I, I, I would say Dynamite too. And yeah. it's it's the one that I watch uh every week, except for when mm-hmm. I was on vacation. I didn't watch one of the weeks. Um but I think they're they're leaving a little bit of uh, wiggle room open here. They're they're not as consistently good, I, I would say, mm-hmm. as they were this time last year. Um, okay, favorite U.S. wrestler to watch? Ooh, that's a good that's a good one. Um, probably Danielson, Brian Danielson. Um, if not him, Moxley or Sasha Banks. Whenever she wrestles again, <laughs> God, Sasha Banks. Yeah, Sasha Banks, so good. Favorite Joshi wrestler to watch? Uh, Mayu Yutani. Favorite male wrestler? It doesn't even have to be Japanese, but just in, in whether it's in NOAA or DDT or New Japan or All Japan. Favorite male wrestler in Japan to watch? I'll keep it very original. Uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi. <laughs> <laughs> Hasn't last. changed. <laughs> the last baby face is what I like to call him. That's a good one. I like that. Um, all right. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's about it. I, I was so, uh, so excited to bring you on. You've been doing great work for fight game media, that podcast. Uh, you've created a, a fan base with, with that podcast. And you know, the, those folks, those, those subscribers, they very much look forward to, to when that show comes out. So nice job. Uh, you and Parker uh, as well. Parker, obviously, people know that he he's on the uh, F4W website. He writes the uh, AW Dynamite recap every week. But uh, but yeah, keep 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 it going. Good luck. Anything else that you would like to plug before we get out of here? Yeah, I'm going to plug my Fightful stuff uh, because I just actually had an interview come out today with Miu Yamashita uh, today of the, as of this recording. Uh, please check that out. That's the first audio interview I've had. And also, by the time you're listening to this, there should be another Stardom interview coming out ahead of their Stardom X Stardom show. And please keep listening to the Five Star Joshi show. It's my favorite thing to do every week. It's so easy. It's so much fun. Uh, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening to me talk for 30 minutes about this, too. You know what you need? You need one of those websites where it just links all of your yeah. stuff. That's what yeah. you need. I do. That's a, <laughs> I have like a link tree um, yeah. in my like. I need like a flashier one, like yeah, not yeah, just like, yeah. hey, here's the million things I do. I need a flashier one. But, Don't worry, we'll yeah, we'll uh, we'll put your Twitter handle in the uh, both in the uh, recap of the YouTube video and and of the podcast too. So awesome. people will be able to find you uh, if they want to search you out. So Scott Edwards, aka Scott E Wrestling, thank you for joining. Uh, so for Scott, I'm Double G. We'll see you when we see you. Peace out.